In this lecture, we're going to introduce the concept of equivalent potential temperature, theta E. In a previous lecture, we introduced the concept of the potential temperature, which was the temperature to which an air parcel would achieve if we moved it dry adiabatically to a pressure surface of 1,000 hectopascals. The assumptions that went into this were that the air parcel was dry, that it was uh, a hydrostatic atmosphere, and that the process was reversible and adiabatic. Uh, and under those conditions, the potential temperature is conserved for those dry adiabatic motions. So for the potential temperature, we're going to derive an expression that is conserved for saturated adiabatic conditions. Saturated means that the relative humidity is 100% and that we're inside a cloud. And so the latent heat of vaporization, which is released when the water vapor condenses uh, into liquid water, uh, is no longer an adiabatic process, uh, and we refer to this as a pseudo-adiabatic process, uh, because the uh, energy of that latent heating remains with that saturated air parcel. And we're going to end up with an expression that is conserved for those conditions. So we have our expression for the potential temperature. We also have our expression for the first law of thermodynamics. dQ is equal to C sub P D dT minus alpha dP. And using the uh, ideal gas law, we can transform that into C sub P uh, dT minus R sub D T over P dP using alpha uh, from the first law of thermodynamics. But we know that in this particular case, this pseudo-adiabatic process, uh, dQ is not going to equal zero because we have latent heat of vaporization from the condensation process. And the way we're going to quantify that is the latent heat of vaporization, which is on a per kilogram basis, times dWs. Where, and of course, W is the mixing ratio. And then in this case, it's the change in the saturation mixing ratio. And that's what dQ is equal to for condensation. And if we substitute uh, that value in for the dQ term, we'll end up with L sub V dWS is equal to C sub P D dT minus R sub V T over P dP. And now we're going to try and find something to substitute in to this part right here. And we're going to start with the potential temperature equation. And we're going to do some mathematical manipulations of this to try and get it into a form that will be useful down here. Uh, so somebody who was very clever uh, decided that they could uh, approach the problem in this manner. And they started by taking the natural logarithm of both sides of the potential temperature equation. Uh, so you have the natural log of theta is equal to the natural log of t times the natural log uh, of the p naught over p r sub d over c sub p d. And of course, the natural log of A times the natural log of B is equivalent to the natural log of A plus the natural log of B. And of course, when we have the exponent, you can bring that in front of the natural logarithm. Um, so we end up with this expression here. Um, <clears throat> then, of course, the natural logarithm of A over uh, A minus B is equal to the natural log of A over B. So in this case, this can be expanded to the natural log of the potential temperature is equal to the natural log of temperature plus the rest of this expression, the natural log of P naught minus this times the natural log of P. And then if you take the derivative of this expression, uh, you'll end up with the derivative of the natural logarithm is d theta over theta, the derivative of the log of t is dt over t, and the derivative of this term is actually zero because it's a constant and the derivative of this term is r sub d over c sub d times dp over p. Uh, multiplying both sides of the equation by c sub d, you end up with c sub p d d theta over theta is equal to c sub d dt over dt over t minus r sub d dp over p. If you solve for c sub p d dt over t, um, you'll end up with this expression. And of course, this can be substituted into the first law of thermodynamics. So we have our first law of thermodynamics, and now since we have used the potential temperature, we have all of the assumptions that went into the derivation of the potential temperature have now been folded into this um, equation for the first law of thermodynamics. 
Uh, we can then uh, simplify our terms by putting that in here. We get to our left hand side, which is the late need of vaporization times d uh, w sub s over t is equal to c sub p d times d theta over theta plus r sub d dp over p minus r sub d uh, dp over p. And of course, those cancel each other out. And you're left with this simplified form of that equation, which we can then integrate. And we're going to integrate from some initial potential temperature to the equivalent potential temperature. And we're going to do that by starting off with our saturation mixing ratio uh, at, uh, at saturation. And we're going to condense out all of the water vapor. And so when we condense out all of the water vapor and get all of that heating into our air parcel, then our final mixing ratio is actually going to be zero. And that's the definition for the potential temperature, is the maximum temperature that that air parcel can achieve uh, when it has all of that additional latent heat release. Um, so if we assume that the latent heat of vaporization is not a function of temperature, it's a bad assumption, but we're going to do that to solve this analytically, and we assume that the specific heat is not a function of temperature, uh, excuse me, not, not a function of the saturation mixing ratio, well, those are actually. Uh, L sub B, C sub P, D, and T uh, are all kind of independent of DW of S. Uh, so uh, ignore what I was saying about L sub B. Uh, L sub B is a function of temperature, but it's not important for this calculation. Uh, and then we have the integral becomes trivial at that point. So on the left-hand side, we end up with the natural log of the equivalent potential temperature minus the natural log of the potential temperature, which is equivalent to the natural log of theta E over E. And on the right-hand side, it's uh, L sub B, uh, C sub P D uh, times T times W sub S minus zero, uh, which leaves you with uh, the, uh, you can take the exponent of both sides, and you'll get the, uh, exponent of the natural logarithm of theta e over e is equal to the exponent of l sub b w sub s uh, over c sub p dt and then you can solve for the equivalent potential temperature uh, where theta e is equal to the potential temperature times a correction factor a heating factor that um, is dependent upon the amount of water vapor that was in your air parcel w sub s uh, and that uh, gives an extra heating factor, which makes that air parcel warmer than it otherwise would be. And what do you use for temperature and for W sub S? Well, if the air parcel is saturated, you just use the current saturation value and the current temperature. If, however, your air parcel is unsaturated, then the WS and the T that you use in this equation are technically supposed to be the um, temperature and the um, mixing, saturation mixing ratio at the lifting condensation level, which is the level at which you lift an air parcel where it first becomes saturated. It's uh, another way to think of that would be the cloud base uh, temperature and the cloud base um, saturation mixing ratio. And uh, if you do that, uh, then this equation actually is a conservative variable for saturated pseudo adiabatic processes uh, where you the heat that is emitted or that is released during the condensation process remains with the air parcel and you can see what happens if uh, the saturation mixing ratio is equal to zero then you end up with the exponent of zero which is essentially one and this converges so that the equivalent potential temperature is equal to the potential temperature. That would be a dry air parcel. Any time W sub S is going to be greater than zero, then this quantity over here is going to be positive, and it means that theta E is always going to be greater than or equal to the potential temperature, theta.